Hi everyone, this is Gail. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make some imitation uh, knitted fabric. Uh, knitting is a big thing right now. Everybody loves to knit. And what I thought I would do is start with some black clay. And this is a silicone mold that I have had for a long time and it's got kind of a just a distressed look on it. it sort of looks like wrinkled paper and I'm going to lay this down on that wrinkled paper and I'm going to work on this and I'm actually going to bake it on this you can bake on the silicone molds would have helped if I cut this with the sharp side wouldn't it and um uh, I just didn't need a lot of leftover on the outside of my mold. Matter of fact, I might just turn it over since I have my craft knife out and just slice around it just so I don't waste too much clay. So as I work on this project, I'll be pressing the clay down into that mold. So this will be that will be the back of our project. And I'm just going to lay that aside for a minute. And this is Sculpey Souffle in a cinnamon color. I was thinking fall, since it is September now. I can't believe it. I can't believe the summer is almost over. But you just want to make sure your clay is really soft. And then you go pinch some off and start to roll it into a snake. Now you might wonder why I'm rolling it into a snake instead of extruding it in my extruder, which would make it a lot quicker, I admit. But when you extrude clay through an extruder, it has a tendency to be stiff. It does, you know, it's not real, um, not real flexible. It's kind of stiff. And so then when you start messing with it, it will um, crack and just not look good. So I'm going to roll this out and I'm going to, notice I keep cutting and it's because it's getting longer than I can manage on my tile and this is a 12 inch tile so you really don't need it to be but so long but try to give it get it as even as you can and I do have a long piece of acrylic that I hope I put back in my drawer have a tendency when I work on things to sit them here on the side and then they sit here there that there, there it is it's got clay on it but if you have a long piece of acrylic you can roll it with that to kind of make it even but try to make it about the thickness of your worsted weight yarn. And what we're going to do is fold it in half and I'm not going to bother with trimming the ends because we'll do that later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm just going to hold the left side down and take the right side and twist it. You can try to keep it as even as you can. Okay, so this, I'm just going to press the ends down to hold it still. And I think that's probably going to be about it. So now we have a piece of yarn so to speak, that is twisted going from the, uh, from the right side from top to bottom. 
Now I'm going to roll. Let's go ahead and put that on here. Let's put this on my clay in a straight line. And again, if you want to use your acrylic to get it in a straight line, you can press up against it to make sure it's straight. And we'll keep doing that so it doesn't matter if it moves a little bit. Okay, now I'm taking the rest of this clay and I'm going to try rolling with the acrylic sheet from the very beginning, but I think it's still going to be too much clay. Let me kind of just cut this in half. Now you can roll this by hand, but if you're like me, I don't do that very well. But I think I will just because it's quicker. I can spread it with my fingers and I'll finish it up with the with the acrylic block. Okay, so now I've got a, a second piece. I'm going to fold that. hold this side down and this time instead of rolling this up like I did on the last one I'm going to roll this one down and be sure to allow yourself some extra clay because you see what's happening down here where I'm rolling with my fingers but what this is doing is creating if you look at this one this one the lines are going this way on this one the lines are going this way but I'm going to take them and I'm going to lay them right next to each other and line them up Try to not let them unwind too much and then trim off the end. And if you look at that now, it looks like a knitted pattern. And what you would do is just keep doing this, alternating the directions that you're turning your clay. So I'll, let me do it one more time. Roll out the clay to your desired thickness. And I know that a lot of yarns are not very consistent in their thickness. So if you, you know, some yarns have little knots of fabric and stuff in it. So if you happen to end up with something like that, don't worry. That's not a bad thing. It'll just look more natural. Alright, so the last one, I went this way, so this one I'm going to go away from me. I'll start twisting. There we go. And try to get it to be about the same thickness as the one that you've got already on the clay. And line it up. And just trim off the ends. And I'll do one more. Then I'll turn the camera off and finish this up and show you what we've got. And 
And you can do this in different colors. Um, I thought about marbling this with some brown to make sort of a harvest type color, but I figured it would be better to show you on a solid color. And then if you want to do a marbled one, you can. Okay, I think I'll fold this part down. So this one I'm going to roll towards me. And you just have to work all your way down the length of this in order to get it even. And again, line it up and press it together. And trim off the end. See, do you think that looks like a knitted piece of, you know, knitted yarn? I think it does. So I'm going to continue doing this and fill this up so we have a piece that we can work with, and then I will be back. Okay, I just thought I'd come back in after I turned the camera off and started thinking about how much rolling I was going to have to do. I got to thinking that since this is souffle clay, which is much softer than the other clays, that I would go ahead and use my Macon's extruder. So that's what I did. I went ahead and filled this, and I ran a really long piece and then I'm laying it side by side. Let me cut off the wonky end that I just squeezed with my fingers. But I just decided I would cut sections. Because I don't think this clay could be brittle. I think uh, when I learned how to do this, the only clays out there were like Cato and Primo and Fimo and there was no souffle clay so I'm I'm just going to use that and I'm just rolling this in opposite directions just to speed up the process but I just wanted to let you know that I did switch over to an extruder and we'll see how that looks okay I have done this and as you can probably see, the stitches down here are a little bit thicker than the other ones, but it's still going to work. I'm just pressing down a little just to make sure it sticks to the black clay. But there's our stitching. It doesn't it look like a knitted... I just love that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a shape and I was thinking if I used an oval that um, I could use it either as a pendant or a pin. I'm just trying to think here if I should go with something a little bit bigger. But I think I'm going to stick with this. Or well, actually, I'm going to do it do one this way if it'll fit just barely so I'm going to cut that and I'm going to be careful if you're using a silicone mat not to cut your silicone but pull this off and you know, I'm as frugal as I can be. I try to separate my clays so I can keep my black with the black and the cinnamon with the cinnamon. And that's going to be mixed, so that'll end up going in the scrap. If it's just a little tiny piece of black, I don't worry about it. But. 
I have to save my clay. That little bit of black that's on there won't make any difference and I'll just put this in with the scrap and then that's my black. Whoops, missed my bowl. So I've got one now that is oval. That way, and I don't have enough room. I was going to do another this one the other way, but it's it's not enough room. So we're just going to work with this one. Can you see the back? How it's getting kind of texturized. But like I said, I'm going to bake it on this. So. And what I need to do now is pull as much of this off as I can. Now what I'm going to do is roll out another piece. Now we can use the same color or we can use a contrasting color. Um, I think I'm going to, well, I don't know, maybe I ought to do the black. If I can get this soft enough, this black is Primo black, it is not souffle, so it's not quite as soft. But what I was thinking about doing is rolling another snake about as wide as this is tall. If you look at the side here, this black was a number three and then you've got this on top. So we're looking at almost a quarter of an inch. Not quite, maybe three-eighths of an inch. eyeball in this and that looks the size looks good to me I hope it works and again I will use the acrylic sheet to try to get it all the same size this really is a lifesaver sometimes and I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut an angle I'm going to just wrap this around. That's just about the right size. And then here I will cut another angle. Actually, I'll just So that this comes together. And what I think I will do, um, let's see, what's the best thing I think I could do? I could put dots around it. Uh, I could put needle tool lines around it. I could do this. I think this is what I'm going to do. Just take something, a toothpick. This happens to be one of my T-pins. And just evenly space marks going all the way around. Only problem is I can't see the black. From where I'm sitting but this would make a nice gift for a knitter
if you have any friends that are into knitting or if you're into knitting you would certainly show off your work or show people what you do I didn't get that to go very even so I may redo that but that's one thing that you can do let me show you that a little bit closer up just with the little lines through it then you can take maybe a dotting tool or whatever and just in between maybe every other one put a little dot I should be doing this a little bit better. Let me see if I can... This one is, looks a little thicker than on the other side. I'm going to try to push it in a little bit. And I'm also going to try to round this place here where I... Where it came together. There you go. Now also what I would do is I would put some kind of little charm on it. I've got an elephant. I've got a square heart. I probably have some round hearts. I've got so many charms. I just didn't dig into it. I was looking to see what I had here. And I've got a little glitzy heart. But I don't... Oh, well, that might look good. Oh, I'm going to let me get my charms out. I've got so many charms. I've got containers and containers of charms. Which probably will go in my next tea stash because I've got way too many. I've got buttons. I've got an earring I lost one of, so I've got the dogwood on the other one. So even the dogwood would look good in there. See, i got little birds. I've got keys, seahorses, butterflies. Here's some little hearts. Let's see what this one says. Together we can make a difference. And it's got a, a ribbon on it. So that would not be good unless you, the, that person you're making it for is a survivor. There's a pretty heart. And some of these, what I did is I took the... Charms usually come with the little hook, little eye on the end. And I take some metal snippers and I cut those off. Because that one would look pretty good. Let me get my snippers. If I can find them. Now don't use my good ones. Because this is a harder metal. I use regular tool type nippers. I don't use jewelry nippers. I'll use that one. Before I do anything else with it, I think I'm going to put some perfect pearls on it. And because it's copper, actually this is bronze. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little piece of clay And test some of these perfect pearls to see which one I like the best. This one is bronze. I 
It makes it look like metal. Whoa! Almost had a little catastrophe there. Okay, and there is a Kiwi. Here's the copper, which is closer to the cinnamon color. That's pretty. I think I like that better. I think I'm going to use the copper. I was thinking about trying the gold, but I really think I would like the copper better. I'm even going to put the copper on the black. But what I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to start with my finger. Because I don't want to put too much on here. I just want to put it on the surface. But let's see how it looks. If it doesn't cover enough, then I will put it on a brush. But the brush seems to get it down into the into the cracks more. So I'd rather just, ooh, that's pretty. <coughs> Excuse me. It is raining cats and dogs outside. We are getting the rain from Harvey now, even though we're not getting the awful rain that they got in Texas and Louisiana. We're not expected to get anything near that. That's pretty. But I'm going to just ball that up and put it back in with my clay. And I'm going to offset this. Actually, that being silver, I probably should have used silver on the black, huh? wonder if I can put silver. I don't know that I have silver perfect pearls. I don't think I do. A pewter. Add a little pewter over top of this copper and see what happens. trying to get it just on the black. I don't want it on the knitting part. And the reason I like Perfect Pearls is Perfect Pearls has a type of resin or something in it. So when it's baked with the clay, it actually bonds with the clay. Pearl X does not have that. With the Pearl X, if you want to make sure the color stays on, you almost always have to put some kind of a glaze or something over it after it's baked. But there's that. Now, how am I going to hang it, or what am I going to do? I think I might make this into a pin, which means I will bake this first. And then I will come back and put a pin back on it, and I'll show you how I do that. So I will be back after this bakes. And I have taken my knitted pendant out of the oven. And you'll see that this is real silvery. And the reason is, when I, right as I was putting it in the oven, I remembered that I had this, and I'm afraid this is not for sale anymore. They don't make it. But this is a, um, oh, a 
what is the people that make Mona Lisa. And it comes like this, and it is Mona Lisa metallic powder, and it is actually a um, powdered leaf, if that makes any sense at all. You know how you use the flakes or the sheets to put gold leaf or silver leaf or whatever, and this is the same thing in a powdered form, and this is the platinum. And they don't make it anymore. I have looked and looked and looked and can't find it. I happened to find this on clearance at um, AC Moore probably a year ago. And I'm sure it was on clearance because they aren't carrying it anymore. And I already had this bottle. So I had forgotten about it because it really does leave a really nice metallic look to the clay. Now, being that this was a warm color, I probably should have used the gold. Uh, but I used the silver charm. And <coughs> the last thing I'm going to do with this is to put this charm on permanently, but I'm going to wait. Um, I pushed it in and let it bake on it. But it will not stay. It will eventually pop out. So I'm going to pop it out and glue it back in. But right since I'm going to be working on the rest of it right now, I'm not going to do that. And then when I looked at the back, I saw that my back really wasn't pretty because even though I laid it on the texture, it has this seam here. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to just go ahead, actually, first of all, and this time I will use um, what well, if I can find either one. I guess I'll use my poly paste. This is made by Donna Cato, and it's a pasty. It's like sort of like liquid clay, except it's not liquid. It's pasty, and you just put some on your fingers or on a sponge or whatever and you can spread this on your baked clay so that the raw clay will stick to it. And the reason I like this as opposed to bacon bond or liquid clay is that because it's pasty your clay sticks better. It doesn't slide around as much. And again like liquid clay it doesn't ever dry so it always stays that way. Let me just wipe it off my fingers. So now I'm going to place this back down on this. Actually, what I'm going to do is put it on a piece of cardstock first. And I'm going to cut around it. I'm going to slant my knife in because you don't want to see any of it from the outside, from the front. And slanting it in will give it a beveled edge and it won't show from the front. And I think instead of putting it on here, again, I need to wipe this off. Uh, I'll use some alcohol and these powders will come off. And I'll just save that for later. But I think I'm going to leave it on here and I'm going to texture it. Oh look, it's got some of the silver on the back for laying on there. Um, what is the best thing to do about that? Because it's already kind of stuck on there. I'm not going to worry with it. But I am going to just press with my fingers or my thumbs along the edge, even though it's slanted in. See how it's slanted in, but it still has that sharp edge, and this way it gets rid of that sharp edge. And really, you want to do it right. You could roll it with a roller to smooth it out a little bit. And 
and I think I'm going to use my trusty old um, I guess it's a skid protector or whatever it's sticky on the back but I really like the texture it leaves probably better than the mold I just thought it would be easier and I will probably brush this with some type of powder to blend in this silver but I'm going to wait until I'm finished so now I have a new back on there and it's pretty well textured and I still have some clay let me be careful how you roll up your clay. I could feel I had air in mine, so I'm going to press it down before I stick it through my pasta machine. I'm going to roll it through twice. Now what I think I'm going to do, I do have a pin back. And let's see. I want this side, see if I wore it this way, I would want it this way. Sorry, I just had to lay it up against me to, find, to do it first. But if I make it this way for a pin, could put it there it's not very straight you get a better view of it than I do were you yelling at me that it wasn't straight and then what I'm going to do I'm going to open this up and lay that back on there and I'm going to, let's see, it's just a little bit wider than this. So I need to get a circle cutter. And let's see how wide this one is. All right, that will fit in there, just barely. So I'm going to use that to cut a round piece of clay and I got this crooked again didn't I you need to get this where you want it sorry I just need to look at it before I put it on here and I'm going to lay this circle over top of this so that I'm covering up the uh, silver part of the finding and I'm going to use this to kind of give it the same texture as the back and if you want to, you can smooth this down. Let me find, let's see. I have so many tools, I never know which ones I want to use. And some of them have tools on both ends. And I, you can take it a tool and smooth it if you want. If you, if you want to not have any seam at all. Just smooth it like this. Then go back and retexturize it. Do it on the top and the bottom. And if you want to mark it with your initials or whatever, now would be a good time to do it. first thing you need to do is make sure this is going to close and 
And this has a little wire piece on it. I don't know why that wire piece is there. I don't think I want to take it off. I'm afraid it might mess up, but I am going to move it, bend it in a little bit. I don't think that moved it much, but I don't, I'm afraid to do too much. But just to make sure that it's going to close, and it does. So you can texturize that. And if you really wanted to, um, I'm going to go ahead and close this so that it will be out of the way. But if you really wanted to, you could take a thin piece of clay. Let me do it again just to smooth it out. And you could take something like a toothpick. Let's cut a square. If I showed you all my cutters, you would probably laugh. I'm just going to use a small square cutter. And I'm going to wrap a tooth wrap it around a toothpick. This is where you would refine it. Take your tool or your blade or whatever and just make sure that the edges look good. Because I'm going to leave the toothpick in it while it bakes the second time. And if you wanted to lay this right here, Then when you finish with your baking, let me texturize it a little bit. And since this is sticking up a little bit, I will press this down with my little texture thing. And of course I got something on it, which isn't unusual for black clay or for white clay for that matter. But you can flatten that out. Let me smooth it a little bit more. This is up still a little bit too thick. You just play at it till you have it the way you want it. But what I'm aiming at here is I can use this now as a pin or I could put a cord through this and hang it as a pendant. Now let me see what can I do. I don't want this to be totally silver although I guess it wouldn't hurt. But let me, oh, let me show you what this looks like, just because I really like this stuff. It's a powder, like your Perfect Pearls, but it's actually like ground-up leafing material. And you would just take it and brush it on, and look how silver it makes it. It's like you're putting silver leaf on the back. And just do this all over. 
and you've got your texture so it's not really important to well I think I need more texture right there this is when your texture comes out is when you start putting color on it which you can see really does make a nice metallic finish and then I'll do the top the same way this is straight and just get it use an old brush I keep I've got several brushes this was a paintbrush that I snipped the ends off so I would just have the bushy part at the bottom and I only use this from my powders from my mica powders and I keep three or four of them they're different shapes this one is a bushy one to cover large areas but this is that Mona Lisa platinum powder I wish they would bring it back because it's an awesome product and I'm going to put this on a clean card I do have my cards right up here over my table and for some reason I can't grab one. I think I moved my things around and it was tight. But anyway, I'm going to put this, I'm going to bake this. I just wanted to look at it again. You know, I probably... I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. Put a little bit of shimmer. Just to kind of knock off the warm color a little bit. I've got the copper on here. I might hit this up with some... Um, uh, Inca gold or something. I do have some Renaissance wax, but I believe I've got the clear. Yeah, it's this is the clear. So I'm going to maybe use some Inca gold on it. Maybe in the silver to just kind of take the warmth of that color. If I'd thought about using the silver ahead of time, I would have used a color other than this cinnamon. I would have used something like a blue or uh, a red, a reddish color. I may do this again in a red. If I do, I'll post a picture of it. But anyway, I'm going to turn this over on the front. I'm going to bake this again for an hour. And I'm just going to make sure all my seams are covered up. And I will be back when this is finished. Hi everyone, I'm back and our pendant is finished. Let me give this toothpick a twist and pull it out. And now you can see that I have the pin here that has the closure. And then I also have this little tube here on the back. You can see through it right there where you can put a cord or a chain. And this is our pendant that I made here on the video. And while this was baking, I got to, I was really concerned because I used a warm color here and a silver here when I should have done a warm color with gold. So what I ended up doing was getting a cool color and making that... Um, with the silk with uh, with silver clay I didn't put the uh, platinum finish on it just silver clay but also I want to show you the difference uh, I ended up extruding this clay um, because it was nice and soft and I knew that I had you know it was souffle clay and I had gotten it really really soft 
I decided to go ahead and extrude it and when I made this one I extruded it using this tip which you can see is very little let me find a ruler so you can see just how little this is but if you get to, or if you have the um, Macon's extruder this probably came with your extruder you usually get a large a medium and a small and this is actually the medium one and this is um, what I use to make this. Now you can see, this is just another tip for you. The circle here looks a little bit smaller than what came out. And that is the way it is with extrusions. It forces clay out through the little hole, but then the clay spreads a little because it's been under pressure. So this little tiny hole made a little bit larger um, extrusion, little, the snakes. Whereas on this one, I used a tinier hole. This one looks really, really tiny. But look at the, at the yarn that I'm going to say came out. But I like this size better. So if you have a choice between the medium or the little hole, use the little hole because I think this turned out much more natural looking than the other one. Not that it, it looks bad, but I just think it would be better to use this tiny little hole as opposed to this one. So that's my word to the wise for now. But um, I don't know how I have to put this on and I don't know I don't know how this is going to interfere with um, with it laying flat when you wear it as a pin, but it should be okay. I may have a little bit too much clay right here for that because it is thicker right through here. So next time I would probably make this clay through here a little bit thinner so that this doesn't poke up so high. But I think it turned out great. I will pop this little charm out and glue it in with Weld Bond. And this one, I will pro even though this has a sparkle to it, I wonder why this has a sparkle to it. It's just called Lagoon, but it has a sparkle. Now that it's... I don't remember going over it with anything. But anyway, I'm sorry, I'm just wor mumbling to myself. Give it a try. If you, if you have knitting friends... Uh, people that love to knit this would be just a simple little pin or you could use this on a cuff bracelet just make it longer and I would uh, probably have it run this way on a cuff bracelet but anyway that is what uh, that is our video for this week I hope you liked it and I will be back again next week with another polymer clay video and in the meantime please uh, Watch my Friday frolics on Fridays. That's when I don't really do a project. I just kind of tell you what's on my heart. And every week it seems to be something different. So thanks a lot, everybody, for watching. And I will be back soon. Bye-bye.